He's Omar, I'm Majid, we're the substitutes, and today we get hard, man. The midfield enforcer has been marked <laughs> by physicality, an aggressive persona, positional pres pressure, protecting their star players, tactical dirtiness, but most of all, bone-crunching tackles. Roy Keane, Patrick Vieira, Vinnie Jones are examples of a past. So, Omar, is this position, yes or no, is the enforcer extinct in the EPL? In the EPL? Okay, so you've narrowed it down. Um, yeah, I think so. I think that the EPL, the enforcer, when you... Okay, so I'm going to define it two ways. One, you have the elite enforcer. I would put Roy Keane, Patrick Vieira in there. They play good football. But then you have like the dirty enforcers, the one that you mentioned. Like They were tactically dirty. Vinnie Jones, maybe you could even put, I don't know why, but Joey Barton in there, David Batty, you know, players who would kick the shit out of the other team. And in some cases, it's funny to watch and for good reason. You'd let them know that you're there. You don't see that type of player anymore. So yeah, I think that position is dead and gone. You know? They would kick the shit out of them and they would enjoy it too. Um, what yeah. happened? What happened? Who's to blame? <laughs> okay, so... I wouldn't, yes and no, I would say it is a blame game or also is it the evolution of the game. Remember back then, like I mentioned Roy Keane and Patrick Vieira because they played, they were part of elite clubs. Um, so they played for great Manchester United sides, they played for a great Arsenal sides. Uh, Patrick Vieira was an invincible. Like he did a dirty job, but he also played great football. So, but then the other teams like Vinnie Jones, uh, David Batty, uh, what was it, Joey Barton, like they weren't always part of the elite clubs. Like, so they, their job was to kick players. Like their teams played long balls and other teams normally played long balls as well. So they would kick players off the pitch. So the game has changed from that. Now, even like, uh, I wouldn't say smaller clubs. I don't even want to say big six. That's a, that's a. That's a topic that hurts for a lot of people, even for me. But clubs who aren't part of the big six, like they play better football now. Like the game is faster. It's more technical. They have a lot more skill. Well, so you've mentioned the invincibles. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, that's it. Sorry. You referred to the invincibles. Do you think Arsene Wenger had a big uh, presence in getting rid of the enforcer? Because after the Invincibles, later on in his career, he never had another enforcer or that type of personality. Well, that's a good point. Um, I actually think it's just because he kept selling players. Um, he And he wanted to play like beautiful football, but Arsene Wenger, his first team and second team, the 98 team and the 2004 team, they were tough teams. They were powerful teams. I don't know whether he's a big part of it or another part could be. Let's look at Ronaldo. And I know this is a big one here because we're trying to pick out what could be a factor, but Ronaldo could also be a factor. Um, he was a player who was kicked a lot, but he was a show pony, like for sure. Like, and they kicked that out of him until he became end product and a show pony. So... I think the game evolved, not just Arsene Wenger and Arsenal, but the game evolved as well. So with Ronaldo and with a more direct style of play, with showboating, this technical type of player, I think that also led to it. And that also leads to another point. But, um, you know, Ronaldo, because he was kicked a lot, a lot there was showboating, there's that star player type thing. And because he was kicked so much, they would kind of dive or f i would say faint in his case because it was a bit of both so maybe that's that's a factor fair very fair we'll get to the diving and feigning we'll get to would that'll be a different video that's an entire yeah. topic on its own i do want to backtrack a little you said that's how the game has evolved i do think personally that the fa definitely promoted the exit of the enforcer what say the, you so are you are you talking about referees or the just FA the as a whole, the marketing division, including like they decide that they want the game to be a certain way. They want it to be more attacking. They want more goals. They want passing. They want less of this sort of... Uh, and they want player For safety as well. And they want player safety. So they pass on that information to referees that 
from now on we want you to referee the game a certain way we want less stoppages we want more yellow cards or whatever and that flows downwards into the refs do you get what i mean or more stop it or more stoppages actually that's what it's resulted in like uh, i know what you mean though like uh, like less stoppages in terms of we want free full football but it's actually resulted in more stoppages because and i know we're doing it in a separate video but players tend to feign and dive quite a lot they get kicked a lot i do think you're right by the way the fa has played a big part in making the premier league image like beautiful football fast paced i mean it's the premier league people love to watch it um it's the biggest league in the world uh, it has the big six um so <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't let that go, man. But like, you know, what? It's I, I do agree with that. And I do also think that referees play a big part. Um, that's something that bothers me quite a lot. Um, they can stamp it out. They can look at the... Uh, when you see a player going down and rolling around and he's acting all injured. Oh, I've been hit in the face. And it's just more like a tap. Like, come on. Like, and... You're right. I think the FA plays a big part of that. They direct referees to let the don't let this happen, but it's actually making the game a bit weak. And I know you agree, man. That's that's we now get back to sort of the usual theme in our thing: old school versus new school football. By the way, you make me feel so old. By the way, doing these <laughs> videos just because I don't TikTok like doesn't mean I'm old. Like, come on. We're all getting old, bro. We're all getting old. And the European Super League uh, aged us even further. Um, <laughs> so now, with since w I also agree the enforcer is over, and I actually look at it just from uh, in hockey, in basketball, and in football, soccer, the role of the enforcer has been extinct, has been forced into extinction. Um, is that good or bad for the game? I mentioned player safety. What do you think? Um... I mean, look, football is a contact sport. Um, and uh, what, okay, what, okay, can I ask you a question? What do you mean by bad for the game? Like, in what sense? Well, like, this, are you talking uh, about from a marketing perspective or like an image perspective or just bad for the game, like a playing perspective or both? I'm asking from any and every perspective how, if you were an enforcer, how would it be? Hmm. If you were like less skillful, but you know how to tackle or you know how to get under their skin, Gattuso style, that's a skill set. In itself, it is, right? If you were a coach, if you were Jose Mourinho, wouldn't you want more enforcers? Uh, I per, I don't... Yes, I, and I wouldn't even limit it to Mourinho. Sometimes you... Some of the best champions, and we don't even actually have to go to champions. Some of the best teams, like you can tell how gritty a team is if they can play good football and they can be physical. Like that's, it's all part of the game. Like it's sometimes you play against uh, the big Sam type team. By the way, that's a big Sam type uh, player as well. Like, you know, play long balls, have an enforcer, sweep it up. And big Sam, how, how is he doing? I don't think he's doing very well these days. The game has kind of moved on from him. Um, I, I, I think I forgot your question, by the way. Sorry, is it good or bad for the game? I get so game. involved in this. Is it good or bad for the game? Having less enforcers, having less physicality, uh, okay, yeah. having so, a less um, aggressive persona, no fights in the tunnel. Is that good? Like, uh, I personally, personally, no. I, I think it's really bad for the game. Um, I, I like my players to be tough. I like my players to be gritty. I, I think sometimes you also, when you come across a team... Who are brilliant and going on a 49 ungame beaten run, unbeaten run, and you need to stop them from going to 50. You need to kick them off the pitch, um, and uh, maybe dive to win a penalty. I'm not advocating diving, but it was still funny at the time. Um, sometimes you need to play dirty to to get an advantage. Diving, though, I'm not advocating. I'm actually gonna go back. I can't advocate that, but <laughs> you know what I mean, Majid. Like sometimes, like this is a contact sport. I know Play what you mean, but I'll actually disagree. I think it's quite good. It lets the game flow. Um, we get to focus on football and football skills, core skills, instead of this kind of tactical dirtiness. Players get to play. Messi gets to run around instead of every two seconds having to get up. So I'm just playing, de playing devil's advocate. It's not the worst thing for the game either. 
it's it's not but at the same time there the balance is what i'm looking for right like this is what i mentioned the elite enforcer the viera the keen i know keen was a dirty tackler sometimes but he was also a brilliant footballer like people forget that he wasn't just a defensive midfielder no he was actually a midfielder like he would go forward he would stay back and the same with skulls viera was kind of the same like he knew when to charge into the box they both played beautiful football that's what i'm advocating by the way that's what i want like i'm not talking about vinnie jones the type of guy who wants to let's just say get a feel for what gasquin's about or <laughs> <laughs> like you know like that type of player fine i get that like sometimes you need that but if you get more roy keens and the game has kind of moved into that like more skill for players more you, you know your position that's what i want and if you're gonna be mean and gritty about it go for it like uh, you're there to win and i personally want to see winning uh by fighting and fighting for your place fighting for the ball kicking the other players and also playing good football not just you know rolling around oh i'm sorry i hurt you and let's hug it out after good good and there's also by the way in terms of player safety again a lot of these measures were taken mm. to protect players to protect skilled yes. players to protect fast runners i just want to mention that as well it's not just a like marketing yeah. tool there was a little bit extra to it but you're right, you know, like the, uh, you're right about that. Player safety is important, but I do think there's a balance, and I think referees can play a big part of that. I think it's a really good point that you made. The FA, I think their directives about this, they can also control it. Like they can say, yeah, you know what, player safety is important, but let's not be incompetent, which they are, and let's actually promote a good game, a fair game, a tough game. That is beautiful to watch. Very fair. I agree. I think there is a balance between, you know, the physical aspect, the contact sport of it all, and the skill of it all. I think there is a happy medium which the FA either cannot or refuses to find. Um, my final question now. Will we ever see a revival of the Enforcer? Um, again, I think that one relates back to the last part, like the FA. Uh, referees if they allow it to come back then yeah I think we can see a revival um, but if we continue on this current trend and if you see over the last 10-15 years like if if you see over the last 10-15 years the game has changed and if you were someone who let's say for example hasn't watched football in the last two three years and then comes back into it you'll be like what's going on with the game the game is completely different and I think it just rests with the FA to if and referees to change it back if you want to. Let's go back to the good old days, man. The early mid 2000s make me sound so old, but that's that was good football and there was tough tough footballers as well. Not for everyone, but that was a good trend. No, I agree. I agree. Um I don't think we'll see a revival, to be honest, especially after Pep Guardiola, mm. Barcelona, Tiki Taka. I think it's very, just stylistically, Thomas Tuchel, uh, Potecino, like we've seen a new wave of thinking. Mm. Klopp even. There's hard pressing, Guggen pressing, but there's not that enforcement, right? Like Yeah. It's good football. It's, it's good football. Like uh, You're right. Like The game has uh, gone in a good direction, but... Man, I'm, I'm, uh, when it comes to football, I'm an idealist. I really hope I see it. No, no, I Again. agree. It's a little too pretty. I do agree. It's a little too perfect. Like, there does need to be some scrapes on your knees, a little elbow bruising, mm. a little cussing back and forth. You know, that's football, right? Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? Is the enforcer alive and well, or is he dead or she? Um... Will we ever see a revival? What happened? Will we see them come back? Do you want to see them come back? Most importantly. You say she, by the way. Women's football, they're, they're tough, man. They are really tough. I'm just leaving that out there. Absolutely. 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 You guys, let us know. Like, subscribe, comment. We'll see you later. Peace out.